Yes, this is a pre-built PC. It's actually the first I've ever formally reviewed on this channel. And I know right away what you're thinking. Ah, it's a pre-built PC. I could definitely build one for cheaper than their asking price. Well, I priced everything out in PC Part Picker, and I'm here to tell you that a DIY option would save you a whopping five US dollars. And that's assuming you opt for a Kingwin variant of Windows 10, which I know many of you feel a bit sketchy about. The operating system is included in the price of the CyberPower branded one, as well as a keyboard and gaming mouse, which are also included here in this list. So right off the bat, not a bad start for the CyberPower VR ready AMD gaming PC. The second thing you're probably wondering is what case this is. This is the Fantex P400 tempered glass edition. It was my favorite mid tower case at one point, even without the glass back in the day. Check out my review of it right here. Just be warned, it's kind of old. Not only does the case come equipped with integrated RGB lighting above and below, but CyberPower has included a compatible Fantex RGB LED strip that wires directly into the color changing button up top. I must say, however, that this is an awkward place for an LED strip and zip tied to the basement at that. Now let's move on to specifications. An AMD FX 8350, I know right away what you're thinking, just bear with me. An ASUS 970 motherboard, okay, also subpar, not a 990FX. Although granted, the included cooler wouldn't get you very far with an overclock anyway. An AMD RX 480 4GB graphics card with a reference cooler. 8GB of A-Data DDR3 at 1600 megahertz, a 600 watt 80 plus thermal take power supply, and a 1TB Toshiba hard disk drive. I will admit, apart from the graphics card and the case, everything else is kinda ancient. Or at least subpar in terms of optimal gaming hardware. It's a budget-oriented gaming PC without a doubt, but of which is relying on 6-year-old CPU architecture, a motherboard that's older than my high school diploma, and a slightly sketchy PSU. Also, why the heck is there only a hard drive in here? I'd much prefer an SSD for a boot drive along with a hard disk drive for general storage. In my opinion, the extra 30 or 40 bucks would be justified. It is nice to see a CPU cooler that isn't stock in a pre-built like this, but after booting up the PC, well, it might as well be. It's very loud even at idle and after tweaking the fan curve. I wish something along the lines of a Cooler Master Hyper T4 had been included instead. They're also about the same price. The graphics card choice is okay. I would have preferred a non-reference cooler for this style case. The card is also only a 4GB model and should be addressed accordingly, but most games in 1080p and even 1440p will stay under this threshold. There are a few exceptions of course, but for the most part you'll be okay. It'd be difficult to max out games in 1440p anyway with these specs, especially with the CPU taken into consideration. So what does all of this give you in terms of gaming performance? Well in GTA 5 and 1080p, P, it'll give you around 95 FPS, do mind the in-game settings below the title. 1440p about 87, not a large FPS decline between the two, indicating a sharp CPU bottleneck. This is because our GPU should be leveraged more as we increase resolution. We're not seeing the frame rate drop and that's because our CPU is holding us back in the lower resolution. Witcher 3 and its graphics intensive segments leverage the graphics card a great deal more, hence the difference between the two resolutions here, 54 FPS versus 37. Our first person shooter in DirectX 12 Battlefield 1 managed 76 FPS in 1080p, 69 FPS in 1440p, so still a slight bottleneck with the newer API despite leveraging 8 threads. The CPU, by the way, was manually overclocked to 4.4 GHz, wouldn't go much further than that with the cooler included in the CyberPower PC. The computer is indeed VR ready as well as advertised. I had to tone most settings at or below high to keep the frame rate up. You want around 90 FPS or so in a VR experience. So what's my verdict? Well, you could do better. You could squeeze in an i5 along with an SSD, maybe even replace the graphics card with a non-reference model, perhaps compromise on a cheaper case, I'm not sure that tempered glass belongs in a budget-oriented gaming PC, and manage to keep the total price in the $800 ballpark. That being said, this PC really isn't bad. It's not future-proof, although I hate the term, but it does include a decent keyboard and mouse and a Windows 10 key, everything except a monitor. So if you're looking for a no-hassle pre-built that doesn't break the bank, Sure, you should consider this one. It's honestly not that bad. And if you're considering a pre-built in the first place, you probably shouldn't worry about component upgrades for the next few years. Maybe maybe an SSD upgrade. I, I would probably advocate for something like that. I'm sure some of you are just waiting to leave comments about how FX processors are outdated and how even stock i5s can outperform them and how you'll never, ever, ever, ever buy an FX processor because they're so old and so overpriced. 
Okay, I don't know about the overpriced part. I do agree with you on everything else. So th this is old architecture. I've heard this, this argument time and time again. Uh, I would never pay 150 bucks for an FX8350, period. So that kind of rules me out of this, the, my interest in this PC. I would never personally buy it, just straight up. But an FX8320E for around 60 to 80 bucks, if they had thrown that CPU into this rig and then dropped the price by I don't know, 80 bucks. I mean, just whatever the difference would be. Uh, $700, 700 bucks for the for a comparable computer would be an even better bargain, in my opinion. So I think they should have gone with the 8320E. That's probably the only major component I would change, other than including an SSD. I think then you would have a very, very competitive pre-built PC at 700 bucks that can definitely handle VR. With that, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for another ITX PC build. This one featuring a KB Lake 7600K and a head-to-head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head -to -head comparison between between the four megalith coolers I've been teasing for the past three or four weeks. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.